And one of the things you mentioned the other day that I, I know a lot of people are interested in hearing about more is the minimally invasive procedure that you're doing. I would love to hear your opinions on how speeding up the process, reducing tissue damage, how all of that comes into play for a positive outcome. What, how do you determine who's appropriate for a minimally invasive procedure? What does a minimally invasive procedure even mean to somebody who's not familiar? Um, so if you go to the, the website of the Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon, there's actually a very, very small section that just says minimally invasive, say, let's say knee replacement. Minimally invasive knee replacement entails four to six inches of an incision and sparing the quad muscle, meaning the thigh muscle in the front of the knee that helps you with your knee extension, you're sparing that. And so I have a little model like right here. So this is the front of the knee and this is the quad muscle and this is the tendon. So sparing this tendon, meaning not cutting this tendon, it's considered minimally invasive. So you can go from the inside of the knee, you can go from the outside of the knee, whichever way you go to go underneath this muscle, it's considered muscle sparing. And, and that's, that's great. And I think that sort of makes the bulk of a minimally invasive procedure, but I think it's so much more. So I usually kind of start from the top layers and kind of go all the way down and go back up again. So from the incisional standpoint, obviously, yes, I, I don't do the one that you've seen where it's mid thigh to mid shin, the straight line. I make truly a four to six inch one and it's around the kneecap so it sort of goes around the patient this way so then they can go ahead and kneel on their knee they're not kneeling on their scar and when they flex the knee it's not it's not causing that scar run right into that line of motion okay sort of a little bit to the side of it so that's my one thing that i've seen patients like love then underneath it again we're going back to the muscle I don't cut the quad tendon i go underneath the muscle this is the vmo this is the inside of their quad muscle I move everything over. I do my replacement. This whole thing comes back and the patient has this quad intact and able to move it right away. And I have this couple of patients of mine that are literally right after surgery, just walking without a walk or a cane. And I've put some of those on my Facebook page as well. Um, and then in, inside the operating room. So I don't use any blood pressure cuff, right? So that's a tourniquet that people talk about and a tourniquet pain, which I'm sure you've seen uh, patients and even uh, folks on the forum complain about. So and is that still a common procedure to use the tourniquet to reduce the blood loss? The, the, there is still a very common procedure and studies have shown that there's really no, no uh, benefit to that as far as blood loss goes. It, it truly becomes a visualization for the surgeon. So they're not constantly dealing with the blood, but if you go sort of layer by layer and slowly, you can cauterize all the bleeding and truly control it. So it doesn't, it never gets in my way. And it's sort of, and there's a ton of papers now coming out saying how it's so safe to do the surgery without the tourniquet. And it's got this added benefit now of no thigh pain, no quadricep muscle, which is that muscle again we talked about. Um, and, and so I, I don't personally use it. If I use cement in my implants, then I will use it. But you were talking about maybe eight or nine minutes of that thing being on compared to an hour, an hour and a half, or almost two hours, depending on what you're doing, especially for revision surgery. I don't use it even for a revision surgery because imagine having that on that, that case is going to go on for two hours. I can't imagine having the tourniquet on strangling your, your quad muscle for two hours, your thigh. Um, so, so that's that it's, it's about being very careful where you place your retractors in the knee, because if you put them in and you're constantly cranking on those retractors, splitting the tissues open, that's insult, that's damage to them. So I'm constantly talking to my assistant to bring the hand in and hold it and, and I'm constantly readjusting their hands because I'm, I'm constantly paying attention to that. Uh, it, it's how you, you sublux the femurs forward or the tibia for the knee replacement, how gentle they are with you doing those maneuvers. And then closure at the end, you know, I, I make sure that I'm closing every layer and not strangulating the tissue. So you don't get this beefy, red, swollen closure you see sometimes online when patients post their photos, you know, that, that's all sort of part of the minimally invasive uh, technique. 